Welcome to the Medical Marijuana Bootcamp. I'm Tang. I'm Chubbs. Uh, today we're talking a little bit more about networking, uh, specifically networking in the medical marijuana industry uh, versus networking in um, the real world or um, mainstream. Uh, what's the difference? Is there a difference? Which which is harder? You know, how do you do it? Um, you know, it's uh, it's that's a very interesting question, Chubbs, and I think that there is a difference uh, for sure because. There is no, like, say, social events, really, in medical marijuana. Now, there's a few uh, conventions and expos kind of popping up recently, but there's really no industry standard, industry team, people that have been in the industry for 20 years. Nobody really knows each other. And that's just because it's, it's you know, it's a gray market right now, and there's just a lot of secrecy, and people are, understandably, uh, paranoid. So, when it comes to trying to find people, let's say you're, you're, you're marketing, um, you know, well, not even specifically, internet, uh, collective, um, vendor, I mean, how do you go about reaching out to someone that you um, have things in common with or you'd like to do business with? Is there a different way of, of doing it, you know, in this industry versus how you'd reach out to someone, um, say, you know, just for regular purposes, let's say you've got a, a book website or a regular mm -hmm. website and you need... You know, some help on that. What's the difference? Uh, fundamentally, I don't think there's any difference. I think a good introduction is a good introduction, whether you're in this business or a, a mainstream business. Okay. Um, I do think that you just have to know that people are a little bit paranoid in this business and understand that you have to play it cool. And sometimes, you know, people want to meet you in a public place or people feel more comfortable doing things their own way just because that's the way they've done it. And you have to respect that just because of you know, the gray area that's still involved in this business, unfortunately. Is there a, a typical age group? Is there any, I mean, you think that the older the person is in the in, in, that's in the industry already, the more likely they are to be used to old school practices and they're going to be a little bit more paranoid? Yeah. Um, are you finding that most people that you're doing business with on different levels or reaching out to um, are younger, older? Um, you, you know, it, personally, I reach out, Richard Cowell is one of my best friends and he's, uh, you know, he'll consider coming for saying this, but he's pushing 70. And, um, so it's a couple, yeah, years, so, couple years age difference between you and me. Exactly, exactly. So, so, so he, but he's been in the game since, you know, 1960. But then again, I know some vendors that are 21, 22, and they do pretty well for themselves. So the way you would reach out to a Dick Cowan is going to be different than the way you would reach out to a young so, vendor. Totally who's, different. Who's, yeah, you know, Yale Econ, and then dude that dropped out of high school and it started to sling pounds right. a couple years ago. Right. That's going to be a completely different style. It's and, and most professional MBA business type people, they don't know how to talk to the dude that just dropped out of high school and started slinging pounds of weed, even though he's a major player in this business. Which is a unique uh, facet to this industry. Very. And is that you can be uh, as educated as you can get, and one of your peers, of one of your, one of your equals, is a high school dropout. And he's making more money than you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And he's having more success than you're having. Right. For Medical Marijuana Boot Camp, I'm Chubbs. I'm Jay. Peace. Peace.